Afternoon guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. And I'm down here at the Pathfinder School outdoor classroom with my buddies, Kyle Sanborn, Nick Gatton. Nick's one of our Pathfinder instructor candidates. And of course, Kyle Sanborn is already an instructor here at the Pathfinder School. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk to you about the new bed sleeve and bed roll that will release on Friday at Self Reliance Outfitters. This is made out of a 600 denier. I made a mistake yesterday and talked about it being 500 denier. It's actually a 600 denier PVC lined material. It's got steel grommets in it. We're gonna show you those in just a few minutes. And you can see what it rolls up to to go on the bottom of the Pathfinder Scout Pack. And this is about 13 inches in length, 13 to 15 inches wide. And it's about four and a half to five and a half inches in diameter when you get it rolled up. But it's about the perfect size to fit underneath your Pathfinder Scout Pack. So we're gonna roll this bad boy out, get some measurements for you, and then these guys are going to show you and walk you through a couple different setups of how this thing can be used and some of the features of the design of the bedroll sleeve. So stay with us, guys. All right, so we've rolled this bed sleeve out now, and it's 94 inches long and 38 inches wide. It has seven grommets on each end that are steel so that you can lace it up. And there are an additional five grommets going down the side here that give it a flap almost like a sleeping bag. So when you're making a bed roll, you don't have to worm your way into a tube. And we'll talk about how to address those in just a few minutes to be able to use this as a raised bed sleeve. But for a bed roll, you have a couple of options. You could actually use this just as a mattress on the ground by lacing up both ends of this with paracord and stuffing it with debris off the ground. And that would give you a mattress of sorts if it were a summertime situation, you didn't want to get inside of it and you just need a light blanket of your clothing. If you want to get inside of it, you can still lace up one end of it, and then we'll show you how to put things inside of it like a wool blanket and a mattress so that you can roll it up in the fashion of a cowboy bed roll. So we have a Guide Gear self-inflating mattress here. This is one of my favorite mattresses. I'm hoping to design something very similar for the Pathfinder brand. But since Guide Gear is one of our partners actually buys from us, and sells on their website. Guy Gear is always a good brand for us to be using. And this air mattress, to be honest with you, is probably the best air mattress I've ever found for the money. It's got a rubberized backside and more of a velour on the top. It's got two valves on it that are brass valves. You can see the brass metal inside there. And it's self-inflating. So you just open it up, lay it flat, give it five or 10 minutes to self-inflate, and you're ready to rock and roll. And you can then slide that down into your bed sleeve to start creating the bed roll. Once you get your air mattress in there, then you can put whatever sleep gear you want inside there. In this case, we're using a Pathfinder 100% wool blanket. It could be a Wooby liner. It could be a Swagman roll. It could be a Swagman basic. It could be any of those things that you used to sleep with, but the wool blanket gives you just an extra layer there and if you open that wool blanket up and sleep directly on the mattress instead of on the wool blanket, then you have kind of an over quilt situation that you can either double up or make a makeshift foot box by lacing up the bottom of this and drawing it tight, which we'll show you how to do that when we do the hammock here in a few minutes. Then you can also make a foot box in this bed roll to keep your feet warm in the winter time as well. So you're gonna take one single bite of a piece of paracord long enough for a hammock line and you're going to run that bite centered through that center two grommets. And then you're going to basically saddle stitch your way out one side and back to the center. You almost just want to come through there and not back through the grommet. Right, correct. There you go. Now you just draw it down tight. Draw it kind of up to the, there you go, right up to the middle, just like that. So you're almost making a clue out of it. Perfect. Man, that even looks good. Perfect. And just draw everything down tight. And now you can do this for both the hammock configuration or a sleeping bag configuration for a bedroll if you're trying to lock it off from any air getting inside of it. All right, so once you've got this configuration pulled down tight, you can use hammock strap for this and use a typical marlin spike in here to attach to your hammock straps, not a problem. We're gonna just use this paracord because I've laid 
in this off paracord. It doesn't bother me. I've got a double thickness of paracord here. It's 550 pounds strength. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around this tree one time and I'm going to go around this rope and I'm going to come back. I'm going to go around this rope again. And then I'm going to take this tail and I'm going to drop it inside just like this. A double tail. And that double tail right there is going to become a slippery half edge right there like that. So if I pull it out, it's going to come out. But this becomes a constant tensioning device against the tree so it can't move. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so once this thing's pulled tight, you've got that triangle there. Everything's pleated like it's supposed to be. And you now have a hammock that you can get into. Again, this is an emergency scenario for if you couldn't make a raised bed. This is only about eight feet long total. So once you make a hammock out of it, you don't have that 10, 12 foot hammock situation. If you're five foot eight, it's gonna be perfect. If you're six foot five, it's not. So Nikki, jump in that bad boy. Boom. All right, Nikki. Good. Pretty good, pretty mm -hmm. simple. Nice, nice really. bucket right there. Yeah. For guys our size, <laughs> that's the money train. All right, so we use 25 feet of paracord on each end of this, just so that you know what length paracord we use. Again, you may need a little longer if the trees are larger in your area, or you can make it a little shorter if you've got smaller trees. But 25 feet is a pretty good approximation. And if you roll that up with your bed roll, you've always got it. Okay, so now we're going to make a raised bed configuration with this bed sleeve. And the problem we have to overcome now is we have these grommets running down the side with this two-foot opening. I'm going to show you how to fix that problem for the raised bed. And with our raised bed, all we did here was we took two forks and we laid them in the tree at a 45-degree angle going out away from the tree and opposing another tree with two forks and 45-degree angles. And then we have two pieces of wood here that are about four inches in diameter at one end, three at the other, that are just tulip poplar cut while they were still standing, so they're nice and straight. And we will use opposite ends in this bed roll. We'll put the large end one direction, the small end the other direction, and then we'll reverse that with the second pole. I'm gonna have these guys first lace up these grommet points. And the way you're gonna do that is by cutting yourself a green stick. And that green stick just needs to be diameter small enough to go into those holes and you're just going to lace it in got a nub on there that one little nub and so it's a simple weave in out in out in out in out to get that stick all the way through once you do that, you've essentially put a rigid edge on the side of this bed sleeve. That will be resting against your poles of your friction fit raised bed. As long as you've got a little bit of overlap there on both ends, you're in good shape. All right, so now you're Getting your poles, which are about 10 feet long. Remember the raised bed is about eight feet long. So these are 10 to 12 foot poles, depending on how much overlap you want. But this sleeve is a little longer than the space we've got set up for right now. So we'll have to compress it a little bit. But you can see you've got one large end and one small end, and they are opposite on the other side. Then you just need to spread that out so that it touches both sides. You can see where we're locked in right here to the Lacing job with the stick, lift it up, drop it down on these uprights that we've got against the tree. And again, you've got a little bit more here, so you can just tuck it down like that. Same thing here, flapped up just a little bit. Kyle, you wanna jump in that raised bed? And there you go, piece of cake. That gives you a bed that's off the ground. Now, because this is a sleeve, remember, when you put those poles through the sleeve, we can also stuff insulation in there in the wintertime to give us a block from convection. That is the raised bed configuration of this 
bed sleeve. All right, guys, we appreciate you joining us out here today at the Pathfinder School Classroom for a discussion on the versatility of the new Pathfinder bed sleeve. Again, this thing releases tomorrow at 1 o'clock, so that's Friday at 1 o'clock. The price of this is $59.99 for just the bed sleeve. You can add your other components to that as you go so that you can make a complete bed roll system if that's what you want to do, or just roll the bed sleeve up itself against the bottom of your pack, scout pack, or otherwise. We appreciate your views. We appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Thanks.